In this lecture, we're going to have a little bit of an investigation and examine that ray marching algorithm. Now, what I'd like you to do with this is just select it. Now, hit the R key so that we can resize the actual cube and start to resize it. Take a look as you go in and out what's happening over in the game. You can actually see the sphere itself on each of the planes of that cube. And if we rotate around in the scene, you can see that as well. So what's happening here? Well, you might think that your little tiny sphere that's sitting in the middle is no longer fully intersecting with the cube, but that's not the case. And that's not what we're looking for is that intersection. We're actually looking for the volume within there. What instead is going on is that your marching isn't going far enough to pick up all of this detail here and hit the bits that are in there because now that you've made the cube bigger you need to march your view direction ray further into it in order to pick up the detail so to see that in action go back into your shader code and what we're going to do is just increase the number of steps so if we go up to our steps here and we double this to 128 and save that. Let's go back into Unity and bam, we have our sphere back again because we're now pushing our ray or marching it, I should be calling it, into there to find it. Now let's take a look at what happens if we change our step size. So we've got our steps at 128 and our step size is very small so it's 0.01 let's change it to one now what do you think you're going to see when we go back and check out our cube all right so what has happened here well you can see that it's kind of cut off in certain spots so what has in fact happened is that the step size is now so large is that you're jumping over with each step actual detail in that uh, particular sphere. Now in this case it's not particularly obvious and when you have more complex scenes you'll actually start to see with larger step sizes is that you will get all these strange artifacts going on when the scene is more complicated and so detail will actually be left out. All right, so I'm going to go back in and just change this to 0.01. Now if we go back into Unity and have a look at our sphere we've created, you can see that it is flat shaded so it actually has no dimensionality about it. You can of course determine where you would like some shading on this based on the depth of the pixel that the ray marching has found. If we go back into the code, the depth is being returned by the ray march hit. That means that you've got the depth to use if we just go down into our frag here. So where do you think we could apply that float value of depth into the calculation for the pixel color so that we can get some kind of a depth on there. Just have a little bit of a think and a bit of a play with that. And uh, when we come back, I'll show you a few options. How did you go? Did you come up with something that's going to provide some shading? And if you did, you might have noticed a little trick or possibly even an issue in the code that's come up, even though the code does work. So let's just say for now, okay, we've got our depth value here that we're returning. Now, if I put depth in this red pixel here, let's just multiply what we've got there. So our one by depth. And if I just save it and go back into Unity, let's have a look at the sphere. It's nicely shaded. If we turn around, though, we can actually turn around to the back. Now, if we're ray marching, we should be ray marching from the camera's position. So that means that the bright side should always be facing the camera, but it's not. 
Okay, so there's something a little bit odd going on there. Even though this works and it looks really good, unless you kind of have a think about it and investigate it, you'll find something is not quite right. If we click on the cube and have a look at the axes of the cube, you'll notice that the brightest spot is in the forward direction along the x-axis, which is here. And if you're even got a better resolution than I have, I can see if as I move this cube around, you might not be able to see it in the video, but there are these round uh, striations or concentric circles that are appearing on the surface of the sphere. And if I enhance the video, we might be able to pop those out a bit more. These are your steps. Okay, and so you can actually see the effect that I was talking about before now that you've put the uh, shading on there. Now, let's get back to our original issue. Why is the shading on the X and dependent on the X direction? Well, let's have a look in the code. If we go back to the code. The depth is the position or how far we've stepped away from the camera. And if we go and have a look at the ray march hit method, you'll see that we are returning the position. Now, position is an X, Y, Z value. When we return position but cast it to a single float, we only end up with the X, not the Y and the Z. So that means we have grabbed hold of the depth in the X direction only and used that to affect our pixel value. Therefore, it is probably not entirely accurate. So what you could do in this case around position in your ray march is just put a length around there like that, which will return the length of the position, which is, of course, your uh, vector or your ray into the environment. Okay, now if we save that and we go back into Unity and have a look at what we get, we definitely don't get as much of a pronounced effect going on on that sphere. Because now we actually have a length of a vector, which could be much longer or it could be a lot shorter than the value of one, which is going to affect, again, your color, uh, as opposed to an X position in the environment. So if you'd rather, you could actually return the position as a float three, and therefore you'd have the depth on the X, Y, and Z axis, and you could use that for coloring. So what we'll do in our Ray March hit, we'll actually change the return value to a float three. We will get rid of our length that was just put in, so we're still returning position. But down here, instead of zero, we're going to return a float three of zero, 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 which is essentially something with a length of uh, zero. Now what we can do with that down in our frag is grab hold of that depth in a float three. Then we can test if the length of the depth vector that is returned is not equal to zero, then we can still color it with uh, a completely transparent white. And with our depth, we can replace these colors in here. So if we put depth.x, depth.y, and depth.z as the values we want to use for our pixel, now we save that and go back into Unity and we get this very colorful looking ball where you can see that your red channel is on the X, your green channel is on the Y, and your Z channel is the blue, as we have put into our shader, which is quite elegant. Now, what about lighting? Well, there's a light in the scene, but currently our shader does not account for it. So I'm going to leave this as a challenge for you, and it's quite a big challenge. But what I want you to do is go back and have a look at the vertex fragment lighting shader that we created in that section and see if you can piece together the code that you need from that and put it into here in order to start shading this or getting shadows that the light is actually producing onto the surface 
of this sphere. So pause the video now and when we come back I'll go through that step by step. How did you go with that challenge? It is a little bit of a challenge, isn't it? You might be able to get a lot of the code from the VF diffuse shader across into here, but you might not get the result that you're after. And let's have a little chat about why that's so. First of all, let's do what you probably did yourself. Okay, so first of all, we're just going to bring across the lines of code out of that diffuse shader for lighting that we looked at. So it's um, going to be a hash include first of all and we're going to need unity lighting common dot cg ink to make sure that we've got all the right functionality we then need to get the normal for our vertex because the normal is what determines which way the light well not which way the light's coming but how the light from the direction it's coming is going to interact with the surface according to its normal so in here we're going to put a float three and let's call that normal and we will make that a normal then down in our v2f we're going to define the actual diffuse lighting that we want to apply to the color so this is going to be a fixed four and i'll call it diff because that's what we called it before and this was a color zero value right so down in the vert method is where we're going to calculate our world normal using the vertex normal and then determine our normal to the light or at least our um, interaction between the normal and the light's direction so we first need a half three and this will be our world normal which will equal unity object to world normal v dot normal then a half which will be our normal to lighting uh, percentage or amount and which will be a max between zero and the dot product between the world normal and the world space light position zero dot x y z which is the position of our first light once we have those we can calculate what that diff is going to be so o dot diff equals nl times underscore light color zero okay so we now have our amount of diffuse lighting that we're going to add to our color now our color is being generated down in the fragment so let's come down here we want to multiply the depth color value with that diff we don't however want it to affect our alpha so we only need to multiply it against these three things so what i'm going to do is just take depth out of there and just rewrite it like this so above there we can put in depth multiplied equals i dot diff in here and then we can just get rid of all of that and just have depth first and then this is three values in here and then the one on the end okay so save that now we're going to go back to unity and we've got a quick error to fix on line 37 because I'm missing a bracket and also an equal sign okay we'll save it switch back to unity and this is what we get now this might look completely wrong but it's actually quite logical what we've ended up with because if you roll this around you'll see that you've got the corner of the cube in there as far as the shading goes if this was a cube and not a sphere it would be shaded like this because the light is like up here coming down in this direction and if we go and find our light we can actually see see it's coming from that direction now what's happening here is that the normals for the vertices for the sides of the cube are being used for each of the pixels on the sphere it's not the normals for the actual pixels themselves so we've got the wrong normal 
the normals like for this part here are going to have to spread out and go like this all across the sphere so how do we actually find that and you might think well this is going to be impossible to get a pixels normal but think about it if we go to the top of this sphere and just look down on it this is the center of the sphere these are the outer edge pixels now if we draw a vector from the center point to the pixel in question then we've actually got a vector that is equal to the normal of that particular pixel and therefore we can use that as the pixels normal to calculate the lighting so let's go back into our code and implement this and you'll see that it's pretty much the same kind of idea that we've already got running through our code except we now don't need all of this background information so we no longer need the normal for the vertex or calculate the diffuse lighting down in our, our v2f structure we're also not going to use the vert function to calculate these things here so I'm going to take them out but I'm going to control X them so I can just paste them elsewhere so let's take them out and we have pretty much got what we had before we added any of this lighting let's go down into the fragment where we can calculate inside of here the normal and so I'm going to put the code I just cut out back in here and we'll just do a few little tweaks so the world normal as we just saw we can calculate using the center of the sphere and the pixels location now we know the pixels location because we're getting it back from our ray marching it's actually inside of depth so if we say here with a really simple vector operation depth minus the center of the sphere which in this case is set in stone as float three zero 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 that's our center and we know that because we've got our center fixed up here you might in fact want to make this a variable at some point if you want to move your sphere around and therefore you would pass it through just make sure that you update it in these two locations not this one this is um, looks the same but it's actually just a zero depth all right so we've got that there now what we're going to do is again calculate NL which is going to be the world normal against the lighting that's fine that can stay exactly the same this diff we don't need that anymore and instead what we're going to do is take this here so NL multiplied by our light and I'm just going to copy and paste that over the top of the diff because we no longer really have that and do that instead all right so let's save this and go back into unity and there you go now you can see that you've got that light and if we move our cube around or our sphere I guess <laughs> you can see that this is the brightest patch here now of course you can ramp that up if you want to if we select our light which is just over there and we um, move it around so I'm going to rotate it in the X value you can see how it affects the lighting on the surface of that sphere now if you want that to be a bit more pronounced because it is quite dark we go back into our code and just multiply that up a bit so uh, where are we setting the color here's our depth here multiplied equal that and let's just say multiply it by two to make it a bit brighter and we'll save that switch back to unity and now you can see it's brighter I'm not sure why I press play there uh, and if we just rotate around you can see the shadows and then if we grab our light and we rotate that around in the Z the Y and the X it actually affects the shading on a per pixel basis where all of those pixels are actually mathematically calculated for their position and also their lighting from their normals thanks for watching Please support the development of more superb online learning content by subscribing and as always visit holistic3d.com to learn more about awesome games development books and tutorials.